Hi everybody, this is Jim Egan, head of school, Synapse School, with a Friday update, the last Friday of April. Uh, we had our first full week back on campus after spring break, so I wanna give you an update today on where we are with COVID, we talk about high school admissions for eighth graders, Brainwave Learning Center, really exciting announcement, and then uh, something at the end I'll save for a surprise. So let's start off with COVID. Um, we're back from break. We've been testing, we've been masking. Here's what we know. Over break, we had 11 positive cases. Uh, those positives never came to campus, but there were 11 positive cases of kids and of teachers. Uh, 428, we had one positive, and then yesterday, or yeah, 429, uh, we had one positive. One student, one non-teaching staff. So going into next week, we feel it's prudent uh, to, to keep masks on another week and we're gonna test Monday and Wednesday. The reason we're gonna keep masks on uh, is uh, in order to, to do whatever we can to allow kids and staff to be here. So what do I mean by that? I'm not worried any longer around the, um, the, the health effects in a sort of dynamic extreme way, right? We, no one wants to get COVID, I get that. And some are more, um, more uh, cautious than others. But the, the, if we have this transmission effect on campus and we are having to quarantine kids and staff in, in large quantities, that's a real bummer. It's a real problem. Uh, we have teachers who've been out and they're really suffering to, because they're stuck at home, right? We don't want that. They're not suffering because they're sick. They're suffering because they're stuck at home. And so it's a mild pivot, I would say, personally, uh, as head of school, that we are using COVID mitigation strategies, testing and masking primarily to uh, help us limit quarantining, right? That's where uh, our focus is right now. That's where my head is. How do we make sure kids can be on campus? How do we make sure we can have our eighth, uh, seventh and eighth grade trip to Alaska? What do we need to do to make sure that people can just be in school? So it's not about fear of the virus, it's fear of quarantine, to be quite transparent. Uh, so we're gonna keep masks on. Uh, we'll find out a lot on Monday uh, in terms of our testing. If we see an uptick of cases, then you know we'll maybe test Tuesday as well. But we're gonna go to Monday, Wednesday testing and keep masks on for one more week. So that's the update uh, on COVID and understanding that we're pivoting strategy-wise to make sure um, that transmission doesn't happen so kids and teachers can be here. That's what we're thinking about right now. Um, okay, something else that's going on that's more positive regarding COVID is that we were invited into a study. Deanna Mayer, uh, associate head of school, gets all the credit for this. And this is a study involving aerosol surveillance. Uh, Primary Health, where uh, who we've been working with throughout the um, pandemic, uh, has asked us to be in an air monitoring pilot. So they're coming in next week to um, put in these sort of small, they look like um, sort of uh, fire detectors, smoke detectors. Uh, they'll be putting them into lower school classrooms and in some areas where we have congregate uh, a congregate setting, and they will monitor aerosol. And uh, they believe, this study they're hoping will show that this is a, a better way than even looking at wastewater to see where COVID is in a school. Um, and uh, in theory, that if you're monitoring the air and the aerosol, that it gives you a broader window to get testing done right away. And so this could give uh, this could be a real game changer for schools, and so uh, we're excited to be part of that study. They asked us to be part of this study. Uh, I'm not surprised. And we being Synapse, which is a school that is oriented to be a lab school, is going to be involved in things that are going to help all schools. And this is one way we hope to do that. That's going to happen next week. We'll get a report early regarding our uh, air assessment. It's really just an early warning system that we'll be putting in place. Um, and you know, there's some prestige of being forward thinking and shaping the future of managing this virus going into next year because it's not going to go away. Uh, so that's happening too. Okay, some other exciting news that people have been asking me about. The eighth graders, are going to high school and we have a list. Stephanie, our middle school head, gave me a list of where the kids are matriculating in and I have it here and, and I'm gonna go down the list. These are our kids, you know, we have 
33 eighth graders, and this is where they're going. We have a kid going to Bellarmine. We have a student going to Crystal Springs Upland School. We have two going to Design Tech. It's a charter school. We've had lots of kids go there and um, graduate from there. We have a student going to Groton on the East Coast, a boarding school. That's the first student going to Groton. Got Groton. Uh, we have two going to Gunn. We have one going to Homestead High School. We have one going to Hotchkiss. That's a boarding school in Connecticut. Uh, that's our first to Hotchkiss. We have two going to Menlo. We have, looks like five going to MA. One going to Milton, another East Coast boarding school, first for us. We have four going to Nueva. We have four going to Pali. One to Priory. One to Santa Catalina, another uh, boarding school. One to Shawanigan, a uh, boarding school in uh, Canada. Uh, we have three, it looks like, going to Stevenson. Uh, that's a boarding school nearby, um, just south of here. And then one going to Woodside High School. That's the list. Uh, certainly there are more schools the kids applied to and got into, but this is where they're choosing to matriculate into next year. I am really pleased with this class. Uh, I think they had a lot of agency and a lot of input into the process, chose schools that fit them. As you can see, you know, big, comprehensive, wonderful public schools like MA and Pali are quite different than small, uh, intentional charter schools like DTEC or uh, you know, boarding schools on the East Coast like Hotchkiss and Groton. Those are very different experiences. And so our kids have developed over their time at Synapse to know who they are and to know where they want to go for this next uh, uh, an essential part of their educational experience. So that's where our eighth graders are going. Uh, some other exciting news, the BLC, I mentioned as I started here, the BLC was awarded uh, a wonderful um, uh, recognition, right? So we won an award, and again, this is Radhika and the director, Liz Tamourian, uh, they get all the credit for this. Uh, the award is for exemplifying the mission uh, uh, of IMBES, all right? I'll tell you what that is in a second. And so this award recognizes pre-K-12 educators, institutions, schools, programs that demonstrate success in establishing, building, and supporting infrastructure that enhances collaboration between themselves and researchers for the purpose of improving educational knowledge and practice. At the origin of our BLC project with Stanford, was just that. How do you bring together, create a marriage between the researchers and the practitioners? And we very much have been uh, recognized for doing that in, in a way that it deserves an award. And so the IMBES uh, is, uh, is awarding us this, this wonderful distinction. And um, I couldn't be more proud uh, of the group, of the BLC, uh, what we're doing, and um, this, this means a lot, right? This is uh, the International Mind, Brain, and Educational Society. Uh, and we will be able to go and be recognized in Montreal, I believe this summer, and receive the award, and it's a big deal. The BLC is um, doing incredible things here on campus for our staff and our students and our community, and is working directly to enhance um, all of teaching and learning through the partnership with Stanford. Uh, it's a big deal. When we first set out to create this BLC, it was very much a concept. There was no playbook, there was no roadmap, and Liz came to us uh, and partnered with Stanford, Bruce McCandless, the neuroscience uh, researcher and professor over there as a part of this too, and we created something really special. And to see this award um, actualize and come, uh, come to us uh, means a great deal to me as a head of school. I'm really proud of that. Okay, and last but not least, we had a great assembly today. It is Poetry Month, and led by um, Hannah's L3 class, uh, they did a poetry exercise where they did a poem in a pocket, and they asked everybody uh, to uh, write a poem in a variety of ways, and then put it in their pocket, and then throughout the day, you could ask somebody, hey, what's your poem? And you'd, They'd read the poem or say, and you could share your poem. And so I really love this thing too that they were doing, so I wrote a poem and I thought I would share it. And I chose a poem that rhymed. They discussed a variety of poems and one was the rhyming poem. So here we go. 
Don't discard after single use. Find a place to live between the negatives and positives. It's okay to be the caboose as long as you give and live within the imperative and the superlative. That's my poem. Now, if I'm capable of taking a risk in reading my poem, your children are too. So ask them about their poem. They should have written one as well. Thanks for listening. Uh, welcome to May. Next time I will see you, it'll be May. And um, keep up the good work, allowing us to keep you healthy and happy. And let's have a great spring, right? We've only got six or seven more weeks. Okay, take care.